Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. We're about to jump into what might be the most exciting Skyrim Scripting episode. We are reading and writing text files. Ooh. Ooh, that's spicy. Spicy. All right, well, honestly, uh, uh, reading and writing text files might not be that exciting, and um, I don't know why you might want to do it, but you should know that you can. There's a number of reasons why. You might want to, from Papyrus, write your own log text files. Um, you might want to save your, I don't know, your uh, configuration in some kind of custom text file. You might want to read INI configuration files and search them. Like you could totally use this to see uh, whether or not a user has a creation kit custom.ini or um, whatever stuff that's in the Skyrim special edition folder. Um, there's all kinds of reasons. You might want to create batch files, those .txt files that you put into your Skyrim special edition or data folder that allows you to run them from the console. I don't know, but we're going to use one of my very favorite mods to do it, and that is Papyrus Util. I'll even do be a big me. There it is. Da da! Papyrus Util. It's one of my very, very favorite mods. I use it all, all, all the time, and it is by Exiled Viper. Thank you, Exiled Viper. Make sure to get the special edition version, and it requires SKSE. So we're going to download this with our favorite mod manager. That could be Vortex for you, and it is a uh, mod organizer too for me. I love Vortex Duo. I use them both, as you've probably seen if you've watched my screencasts. So we've already downloaded it, so it wants to know if I want to re-download it. I don't. I'll install it. And uh, I have just installed it. Did I? I thought I deleted it. I deleted it. Let me reinstall it. I'm going to call mine Papyrus Util. You can call yours whatever you want. I'm going to turn it on. Now, let's make a mod really quickly that will, I don't know, read and write from text files when you cast a spell. Let's hop in the creation kit. And now for us Mod Organizer 2 folks, we're going to make an empty mod. I'm gonna call it something like Textastic. Textastic. That's gonna be hard to say and hard to type, but we're gonna do it. I'm gonna turn it on and uh, y'all non Mod Organizer 2 folks can just hop right into the creation kit and just wait for the rest of us. Uh, I'm just uh, telling creation kit to write its files into Textastic. Now I can kick off creation kit and I will, I'll be small. Boop. Cool. Uh, let's save a new mod. I'm going to call it Textastic. And let's just make a spell or something. Um, that uh, when we cast it, we'll do stuff. We'll read and write from files. I'll call it Textastic Spell, and I'll just call it Textastic, and it'll be a fire and forget spell, so we can just go ching and fire it off, and every time we fire it off, it'll run our script. Um, this will super duper complain if we save it because it doesn't have an effect, so we'll go make an effect, and we will remember to attach the effect to the spell, or uh, your game will crash whenever you try and load the, the magic menu. Not that we've had that happen a couple times. So make a textastic effect. I'll just call it textastic. It does need a name for it to be associated with a spell. And give it a magic skill. Otherwise, the player can't find it in their magic menu. We'll do conjuration, because we're going to conjure files out of thin air. And we can't associate a papyrus script with it until we uh, close it and open it. So we'll make a papyrus script. New script, textastic effect script. Now there's a couple different ways that we could get the um, the player of this spell. Uh, we could uh, you know we could make a quest and in the quest script give it to them. Uh, we could uh, make a quest alias and uh, give it to them that way. Um, how much time do we have though? We're four minutes in. Let's just get it from the console. Is that cool, y'all? So what you're going to do is you're going to this effect and you're going to right click edit source. And for the rest of the episode, you're going to put your code in that box. But just as always, I'm going to head on over to Visual Studio Code. I'll be right back. 
here we are on our script. Let's do something. Uh, let's do um, events on effect start. This takes the two actors, the target and the caster. You can find the event on creationkit.com. Just search for on effect start. Oh, we've made this so many times. And we'll just debug dot message box. Hello. And control S to save and compile. And I'm going to do my compilation way that I do in Visual Studio Code. And let's open up the game. Now, we need to make sure that we are running it with SKSE. So SKSE loader. Uh, make sure that you turn on Papyrus Util in Vortex or um, uh, you know Mod Organizer 2 or whatever. And uh, make sure that uh, for Mod Organizer 2 folks that you actually enable the Textastic plugin that we just made. Let's see, I see that uh, there were some extra files hanging out from the last time I tried to record this screencast. There were a bunch of police sirens, and also I went for 25 minutes. Uh, I'm going to shoot for less than 15 this time. So let's cast our uh, spell. Uh, we don't have it, so let's give it to ourselves because because we didn't uh, we didn't do it. So let's help do help textastic. There's the spell. So we'll do player dot add spell. Oof, five oh 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 eight oh one. Oh, it's 800. There we can see Textastic added. We can find it in our... Oh. And here I am back in Creation Kit right after I told you that you have to associate effects with spells, otherwise it will crash. Um, so they both need to be fire and forget. Are they both fire and forget? Aha! We didn't set the casting type for the effect to be fire and forget. Now let's associate it with the spell. Cool. Save. All right, back to that edit source box. Now, as I was saying, in game, you can go to your magic menu. It won't crash. And you can go to Conjuration, click your Textastic, and uh, we'll just cast that spell. And it says hello. But let's have it do other stuff. Let's have it uh, read or write a file. So let's go back to our code. You can be in your little edit source box. Uh, I'm going to be here and because we have Papyrus Util, you have access to JSON Util and MISC Util and Storage Util and Actor Util and Papyrus Util, all these cool things. And we're going to use MISC Util. Um, and we are going to, as always, I got to tell them my uh, my Visual Studio Code that I'm using Papyrus Util. All right, Visual Studio Code, I'm using Papyrus Util. Let me use it, boys. Cool. As I was saying, misutil dot, and then there's read from file, there's write to file. Um, you can say misutil write to file, give it a file name like a cool file. Uh, you can have like a .txt because this is going to be a text file. And then we'll do uh, this file sure is cool. Because you give it the, uh, the file name, the text you want to put in there. And then you can say uh, whether you want to append or not. So whether or not this is going to keep adding this text to the file. Great for logs. Great for logs. Or if you want it to completely replace things. So let's do this. Control S to, uh, you know, compile. I'm going to do my way. And we'll go back into the game and we'll reload textastic effect script. Cast the spell. It still says hello. Reload script. I'm just falling to pieces, aren't I? Jeez. Jeez Louise. Doesn't do anything, but it does. Let's head on out of game, and what you want to do is you want to head on over to your Skyrim Special Edition directory. So I've got mine right here, and uh, I can already see that there's this file called Cool File, and it says this file sure is cool. 
So by default, it'll put your files into the Skyrim Special Edition folder. And I don't know if we can put stuff into top level folder out outside of that. That would be really scary. Um, so uh, never let your users provide the path to this file. Because let's find out if you can do this. I'm going to do dot dot slash slash save build. That should put it into the top level directory. The dots to get to the top level and you need double slashes to specify slashes for directories here. So I'll reload script. I'm going to go to this Skyrim common folder. Cast the spell. Oh my god, oh my god. People could totally put this like on your C drive. Uh, let me go to my C drive. C folder. Let's go to uh, C slash slash cool file. Uh, I got a build. Play the game. Reload the script. Cast it. Okay, it's, it's not in my C drive. Let me double check. I cast it again. But people could dot dot apparently all their way up there. So um, heads up, heads up about that. But now let's uh, uh, let's see it append. We'll just call it cool file again. Save, control S to build and compile. So it's just cool file and it says this file sure is cool. Reload your script, cast it. I'll cast it with the other hand now. Cast it with the other hand. Cast it with the other hand. Now let's go into our Skyrim Special Edition directory and go to that cool file. This file sure is cool, this file sure is cool, this file sure is cool. And it just keeps going off to the right. If you wanted to add new lines, you could just use slash n right here. Slash n, control s to save and compile. Uh, reload script. And I'm going to cast it, and I'm going to cast it, and I'm going to cast it. I'm going to cast it and then let's go back to our cool file and we can see that the last um, couple ones uh, were put onto new lines so if you wanted to write a log with this you would probably want to uh, you know make a function that you give some text and then uh, it'll uh, add that text to a file and then uh, add a double quotes slash n for a new line so let's read the file or we could overwrite it. I'll just show you real quick how to overwrite it. Uh, by default, append is set to true, but we could set this third parameter to false. Uh, or I recommend you do this so it's a little bit easier to read. Append equals false. Save, build, head on, into the game, reload the script, cast the spell, and then out of game, go to cool file, and it overwrites everything. So now it just says this file sure is cool. So it writes the whole file. It's going to overwrite it every time, which you want sometimes and you don't want some other times. So let's read a file. Let's read back the cool file. We can say misutil dot read from file. This time you give it just the path. So we can say cool file.txt gives you back a string with text. Um, so you could actually just say debug.messagebox. You, you probably want to say string equals misutil.read from file. Whatever, we can do this. Save. B -b build. Reload script. C -c -c Cast it. This file sure is cool. Now on your file system, go to that file and add a bunch of gibberish. Save, back in game. We don't need to reload script because we just changed the file on the file system. So, ta-da, there's all of our gibberish. Uh, now we're reading files and we're writing files. Um, the only extra thing I'll maybe show you is normally you really don't want to write your files into the top level Skyrim Special Edition folder. You probably want to have like a, a file inside data a folder for just your stuff. So you might want data slash my mod, so like textastic slash logs slash my log. Logs, bad logs, it's better than bad, it's good. Um, 
on effects start. Um, can you use on update in a spell? No, because the effect is just going to go away. Um, let's say, here's what I would really do, and I'd probably put this in a property or something, but I'll say string file path. Uh, might say a string log file equals um, data textastic logs log.txt and then uh, whenever we cast the spell I'm going to say this util dot um, write to file we're going to say log file and uh, I'll just say whatever the current time is we can get that with game is it game or utility utility dot time game time to string or just get current real time sure this is one value that will keep updating and updating and updating Right, there's my code. Okay. Now, if you go into your data folder, you will notice that there is no textastic folder. For y'all mod organizer two folks, you're gonna want to go to your overwrite directory. If you don't know where that is, go to. Uh, you're gonna need to close ISGAM uh, to unlock mod organizer two, and then you can launch it again. Go to the settings, the little tools. Then go to paths and then look for overwrite path. It might be like base dir something. The base dir is the base directory right above it. So go to that folder. I have mine customized to be set up as overwrite. So everything that Mod Organizer 2 writes to the data directory for me is going to show up in overwrite. For y'all, if you're not using Mod Organizer 2, it'll show up in the data directory. So that's why mine isn't going to go there. So I'll reload script and I'll cast the spell. Ooh, for me, I can see that there's a textastic directory with locks, with a lock, with uh, apparently some float representation of the time. You should see it in your data directory. Uh, you should see uh, textastic logs log. And now I'll just cast it a couple times. I'm casting a spell, I'm casting a spell, and we're almost at 20 minutes, and I want to end sooner. Ah, we've got to we've got to append, so we could just do a end new line save build go back into my game reload the script cast 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 and maybe you'd be just doing something else to trigger this log, but uh, you could have something print out on every line. So. We're at 18 and a half minutes. I want to wrap up so that uh, something as simple as reading and writing from text files doesn't go over 20 minutes. But Papyrus Util is amazing. You should use it. We're going to use it in future episodes. The next one is going to be on JSON. There's no way we'll be able to get that in 15 minutes. I'll shoot for 30 at the most. And yeah, uh, read and write from those text files, y'all. And be safe while doing it. <laughs> All right. Happy morning, everyone. Bye-bye.